All right, Chuck and Kelly, we're breaking new ground here. You know, I almost feel like a creep for even talking about this. You stuff. were so excited when we got the, the the news yesterday. I just knew that it was news. I was sitting with you at the hospital, and you're like, "Hey, listen, it's now legal to take photos of women's skirts." I'm like, <laughs> yeah. "Great, go ride the subway in Boston." Well, we had a discussion at the lunch table, and it was you women at the lunch table who were saying, "Well, like, you know, if you're not wearing underwear, that's your, you know, that's your problem." That's not exactly the court ruling, but here to help us break, we're taking him down with us, Chaz Farcher <laughs> from Martin Harding. Good morning, Chuck. Good morning, How you doing, Chaz? Good morning. Did you expect to be talking about upskirt photos 24 hours ago? I don't know if I expect it, but it's uh, maybe hoped. <laughs> <laughs> so, so long story short, this Massachusetts uh, court made a ruling. This guy was charged with taking upskirt photos on on the public transit system, and basically, and, and we, you know, you can explain it, but but it, my understanding is the court said, well, for it to be illegal, you have to be nude or semi-nude, and if a woman's wearing a skirt, regardless of whatever is underneath or not underneath. She's not nude or partially nude, therefore the guy didn't break the law. Yeah, I think what the court did here essentially was, you know, strictly interpret the law as it's written. And I think what you have is a, a problem where the law hasn't kept up with the technology. You know, the original peeping Tom law in Massachusetts was written to protect people who were surreptitiously recorded while in a changing room or in a bathroom, you know, and it wasn't written at a time where everybody carried a, a camera with them. Uh, in the shape of a cell phone. So I think that what you really need is a change in the law out there, and that's probably what's going to happen now. Well, yeah, they were saying that in, they're not saying it should be legal. They're just saying the current law, the way it's written, it can't be tailored to fit this particular case, and that maybe it's up to the lawmakers to make the change going forward because of this. I think that's exactly right, Kelly. You could tell by the language of the decision that the court actually kind of strained to try and find a way to you know uphold the conviction or, or, or to agree with the prosecution. But, you know, that's right. The law is just... The old and other states have gone through this. There have been other states where you've had similar uh, convictions that have been reversed, and those states have updated the law. New York actually has uh, a more up-to-date law that would make something like this illegal here in our state. And Massachusetts really just needs to do that. You know, under the current law, you're right. You need to be nude or partially nude, and you need to have photographed someone where they would have a reasonable expectation of privacy. I'm the law just doesn't fit this. Case. I'm surprised it doesn't fall under the category of voyeurism, though. I mean, if you co- if you go up to a person's window and you take pictures of them in their home and they're in the process of getting changed or whatever, they have an expectation of privacy in their home, and that's being violated. So if someone puts a camera under a woman's skirt, there is a reasonable expectation of privacy under her clothing, is there not? Well, you know, and, and that's the, that's the question, and that's that's where you get into a gray area. You wouldn't you wouldn't think it would be a gray area, but when you're in a public place, you know, really what we found is that a lot of times when you're in a public place, if you're on a bus, if you're in a supermarket, you know, people don't really have a great reasonable expectation of privacy privacy because you're in a public place. But that's why you have statutes like the one in New York, where you know, essentially the way the law reads, if you film someone without their knowledge or consent for sexual gratification. It becomes a crime, so you can you can find a different way to word it where you would make it illegal. Speaking with our legal analyst Chaz Farcher from Martin Harding and Mazzotti, so let's take like in New York. So I, I understand that you were saying that if you, you you tape somebody and without their knowledge for sexual gratification, what if I just I'm out in a public place, Empire State Plaza, and tape somebody who's odd looking or whatever, and throw it up on my Facebook page or something? Is there is there any expectation there? Can I do whatever I want with that image? No. No, and that's and that's where you've got to be careful because you've got to craft a law that's not that is still constitutional. So you can't tell people they can't photograph anything or anyone in public because you know you can do that, and you know that's that's where you run into freedom of speech or freedom of expression uh, issues. So you got to make sure the law is constitutional, um, you know, and that's why when we're talking about in New York, you have to be filming someone, you know, in a private body part area, you know, for sexual gratification or something like that, somewhere you would have a reasonable expectation of privacy, you know, so you're not, you're balancing those constitutional requirements with, you know, being a creep. Yeah. God bless the people of Walmart, though. I mean, you have to keep that kind of stuff illegal. <laughs> That's exactly right. We don't want to lose the Walmart. But we want That's, to one of, the safe. That's one of the greatest things ever on the web. Yeah, so so you think, I mean, obviously they can button up the law, close this loophole pretty easily in Massachusetts, uh, but what, do you think, I mean, do you see any kind of a, a protracted uh, fight in the courts over this? No, I don't think so. Yeah. I think the, the Robertson case, you know, this particular guy was the test case. I think, you know, it's gone in his favor. What needs to happen is a legislative change. Uh, and I don't think it'll be an issue. I think they'll adjust the law, and that's that's what's happened in many other states. Chaz, thanks a lot. Good stuff. We appreciate it. Great day, guys. Talk to you soon.